the linchpin of the Trump policy towards North Korea is China. And President Trump now calls the Chinese president, quote, a terrific person, a big change from the campaign. At the same time, saying, quote, we're not getting along with Russia at all. Again, very different rhetoric than in the campaign. Niall Gardner, director of the Heritage Foundation's Margaret Thatcher Center for Freedom. Nice to see you, as always, Good Niall. All right. AP article this morning, the headline, World Power Whiplash. Fair critique? Well, it's a very interesting piece talking about the different dynamics now between the United States uh, and Russia and uh, China. I think what we have seen over the past few days is certainly a far tougher signal being sent by Washington towards Vladimir Putin. Uh, and so How's he responding to that? Well, certainly the Russians are not taking it very, very well. Uh, and I think this is actually a very, very positive development, the fact that Donald Trump is standing up to Vladimir Putin. This sends the right signal on the world stage. And American leadership is vitally important in the face of Russian aggression in Europe, in the face of Russian aggression also in the Middle East. And uh, I think there's a very clear understanding uh, now in the White House that Russia is not our friend. They're not a potential partner. They're an adversary. And the United States has to stand up to Moscow on the world stage. And we're seeing that certainly at this time. Stand up implies that at some point you are going to have two forces coming together, uh, whether it be over Ukraine, whether it be over Syria and chemical weapons use. Is there a risk here now that as Donald Trump has gone from wanting to have a good relationship with Putin and calling him a strong leader to now saying, gee, we have a terrible relationship, that one of those two sides is going to have to do something to show that they are tougher than the other one, and thus when militaries do that, it often ends with people dying? I think the only message that uh, Mr. Putin and his dictatorial regime understand is a message of strength. And the United States has to project that, that strength. You have to not only combine very strong language and rhetoric on the world stage, uh, you have to also add you in the course, Russians military were, strength. Were as the well. Russians surprised by the Syria strikes, in other words? I think it did take them by surprise, actually. I think the Russians had the impression that uh, they were going to be dealing with a president who was far more willing to work closely with them or to accommodate their interests. That clearly is not the case. And we have seen uh, you know, resolve, strength being projected. Also, of course, a significant rebuilding of U.S. military power. In order to keep the peace in the world, you have to have a strong military. And we are seeing, uh, I think, the foundations of that being built now. Well, and, we, and we saw that during the Cold War. The namesake of your center is Margaret Thatcher and Ronald Reagan came together and built throughout the 1980s sort of this, this peace suit through strength philosophy, a huge run-up in military spending, bankrupts the Soviet Union. How are Vladimir Putin and his advisors, or his cronies for that, for that matter, sort of changing their algorithms as they look at the United States right now? Yeah, I think that a lot of the uh, strategic thinking in Moscow, the early stage of the Trump presidency, was flat out wrong. Uh, they underestimated the president. Uh, you now have a, a president who is looking very, very forceful. He's willing to use military strength, as we've seen in Syria and also in Afghanistan. And I think the Russians are getting uh, the message. And we're also seeing a bigger U.S. military buildup in Europe, very strong support for Ukraine, and also, of course, very, very strong backing from Washington for the NATO alliance. And the NATO alliance is fundamentally important to U.S. strategic interests and yeah. keeping the Russians at bay. Well, and the Russians aren't backing down either. Just uh, reporting here this morning, uh, coming out from the United Kingdom, that two big Russian warships just passed through the English Channel uh, in response to all this. Uh, hardly you could say that is a coincidence. Niall, uh, great having you here. Thank My you. My pleasure. Thank you.